Okay, we're going to tie a March Brown parachute. Uh, great uh, fly to be using in the next couple of months. I think the March Brown hatch will uh, get going steady and, and uh, be solid here when the water temperature comes right. Uh, this is going to be kind of a high vis March Brown parachute because I'm going to use uh, bright red yarn for the parachute post for the parachute post. A couple different products here. You can use Antron yarn, you can use parachute post, which is already treated with hydro shed, stuff like that. So um, I'm going to do the tail first, and it's going to be a few uh, moose fibers, like moose for its flotation and its natural taper. Really don't need too many. Um, this is going to be a pretty sparse fly, so literally five or six moose tail fibers. Stack those nice and even. I can just look for the length of the tail no longer than the hook shank. And now I'm going to tie those in and I'm gently wrapping the thread over those up the hook shank. And by gently doing that, I, I'm not flaring the tail. I keep it laying nice and flat. It doesn't just suddenly jump up. And um, if you apply too much thread pressure to that, you get a lot. You'll, you'll prop up the tail. I cut that moose excess. Basically, I took the moose. Uh, fibers that I wrapped over up to about where I'm going to tie the post in. Wrap the thread now with strength over that and I've got my tail. Now back up to do the post and as I said high vis. So dark gray days for March browns, oftentimes raining. I'm going to use a nice bright color for my post. And in order to give it a little more mass, I'm going to actually just kind of I'm going to tie in two fibers with a little, little loop and lean it forward over the eye and tie that in. Bright orange Antron yarn or uh, Parapost, I think some of it's called. That's watershed treated stuff. Cut that nice and clean. Just like the Comparadon, I'm going to post this up so I really get a ball of thread up underneath that in order to force the post up and stay up. Even if you think you got it that first time, it really it helps to get even more. So I can always cut the length of this post, so I'm not too worried about it. It's not a natural fiber. So actually, if I leave it long and the, the, the taper, when I wrap my hackle up, it's not going to hurt me. So I'm going to get back here to the bend and I'm going to dub the body. And really these bugs are more of a tan, light tan underneath, or some, some a marked brown type dubbing, synthetic preferably, in that it uh, floats better. Fine and dry uh, dubbing makes a nice tight dubbing loo uh, noodle. and also offers flotation, so I'm going to wrap that up the shank. And to the post. If you cut it just a little bit thick, you can just kind of spread things out a bit. And now I'm actually going to wrap this around the post. Gently. I'm going to make two wraps around that post. I'm going to come back down gently. And I'm going to be right in front at this point. And I've got just a hair too much dubbing on there, so I'm actually going to remove a little bit of dubbing now. Twist that up. And now I'm just in front of that. Okay, so uh, a hackle can be brown, can be grizzly. Uh, this is a dyed brown grizzly. Uh, I really like this color for March browns, but you could do one brown, one grizzly. You could do, uh, if you had to do just one and you had, I'd prefer to have brown. Um, and gosh, some of these necks, it's hard to find a longer feather. So I want the hackle to be about one and a half times the gap in terms of length, that's almost too big, uh, but I think it'll be okay. So 
So in this case, we've got a little bit of a Christmas tree effect with this feather in terms of it's being a little bit longer and a little webbier down at the bottom. So I'm going to pull that off. I'm going to tie it in by the um, butt of the feather, and I'm going to face it down. Tie that in very close to the post. Sometimes I'll even tie it on the post, but I'll tie it right next to the post. Now what that dubbing around the post is going to do for us is it's going to offer just a, a nice grabbing point for that, for that hackle. And it's going to dig into that dubbing when I wrap this hackle. And that hackle might be slightly long, actually. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot long. Wrap that up the post, and then we're going to come back down the post. And I'm just kind of weaving that hackle down through the, the wraps that I've already made. I like a lot of hackle in terms of flotation, it works much better. And then I'm going to really make sure that those last couple of wraps that I make are underneath everything. And that's that's one thing about going up the post and then back down, is you really can get underneath all those fibers. Now, I've made my last wrap and I'm underneath everything. And now the, the hard part here is tying this off. And this is always kind of where if you let go, everything goes bad here. So grab underneath everything, post, hackle, and pin that hackle. Hard to see there, but I've pinned that with my index finger. And now I'm going to come over the top and tie that down. But I've, I've pulled everything up, all those hackle fibers up high. And it kind of, it kind of wrenches on it a little bit, but it'll come around, it'll come around. And now I'm going to get in closely and cut that feather right off. Now, I still haven't dubbed up underneath um, the post and going forward to the eye, so I need to do that. Again, I'm going to, a uh, little light tan dubbing. And I don't need a tremendous amount here. I've just got a little bit left to do. Again, I'm going to reach in and pull everything back and get in as close as I can to that post and then dub that forward to the eye. You see how everything kind of gets pulled there, but it'll go back. It'll go back right. Same thing on my whip finish at this point. Everything has been wrenched back, but I, I can bring it back to life here. Now I've got the hackle done. I've got the thorax dubbed. You get up underneath there, do my whip finish right at the eye. And by holding all that stuff back, I really make a lot of room for myself. Now I'm going to cut that. I'm going to get in here with the post, make sure that these fibers are, are laying down in terms of the, of the hackle as well as I, as I can make them. Get in with the post, and, and I don't, I'm not trying to make a big wing silhouette here, so I can cut that pretty close. I just want to be able to see it. So it's, it's not the wing silhouette that I'm looking for, it's, it's visibility. And so now I've got a high vis post, I've got a, a real good flat laying fly. This fly is not tied so bushily that it's, it's going to be exclusively an adult. It could really be almost a spinner the way I've tied this thing. It's so long hackled. I can get in and clean anything up that's underneath. And a parachute sits down lower as the body sits a little bit lower and the hackle just props it up. This makes an excellent wing silhouette and a fish is really good, um, especially on those rainy March brown days.